Once more, Inveil Malmsteen guitar. What's the Mayfield Inveil like? That's what I got to know. What was it like? It was very yeah. humble. Very grateful to be asked to play in my band. Welcome to Artist on Record, your ultimate intimate conversation with your favorite artist. In the hot seat, it's the legendary Mr. Graham Bonnet. Today, we asked Graham in this clip, what is it like to be in a band with Ingve Malmsteen? You can catch all these episodes right now unedited in our members only club. So join today or just hit the bell to be notified when we release any upcoming clips. Now put your hands together for Graham Bonnet. What's a 19-year-old Ingve like? That's what I got to know. What was it like? It was very yeah. humble, very grateful to be asked to play in my band. <laughs> he said, oh, what? Because he thought uh, when he got a phone call, um, he thought it was a joke. And he thought it was never, he thought, no, nah, it's not Graham Bonnet's band. Anyway, he came along to uh, the, uh, the, you know, the audition, I suppose. And um, I'd asked him to, to play a song for us that wasn't Rainbow, wasn't anything to do with anything. Uh, a song that I recorded. It was a Ross Ballard song. And he, he came in and did this song. And I went, fucking hell, that's really great. And then, so then he played, you know, a Rainbow song, which was even greater. He was uh, just so perfect. And that was, no doubt, that was the guy for the band. That was it. Yeah, that, uh, fucking doubt. And he was young and all the rest of it. You know, he was eager. And he wanted to be great. He wanted to be good. But he became someone who wanted to take over the stage every night. You know, nobody else was on the stage but him. Because he saw the reaction from the audience. They could see what he's doing. You know, oh, wow, look what he's doing now. Cool. He's, and, you know, he would stand in front of me when I'm singing, all kinds of shit. And, um, you know, the, the band was saying, What's he, what is he doing? You know, he's playing over everything, overplaying. And uh, that's when it became like, well, we can't put up with this forever. And one night he tried to strangle me. He got me up, hold me by the throat. Hold on. He tried to strangle you? Yeah. He got put his fingers right, thumbs right to my throat here. I went out to the bus uh, because he was doing his solo. And the cord came out of the amp, out of his gear. And I tripped over it, apparently, on the way out. I didn't know. Yeah. I went out to the bus to see the bus driver and just hang out while he was doing his solo because that, that was like a five-minute thing or whatever. And he comes running out, you're fucking cunt. And he grabs hold of my neck and starts to push his thumbs into my throat really, really hard. And um, you ruined my soil, you fucking bastard. You pulled my, you know, I pulled the fucking lead out of his, uh, you know, out of his stuff. I, I said, I didn't, I didn't. I said, you fucking did. I actually didn't. I didn't know. And um, so he tried to kill me. And <laughs> one of our our guys, as I always say, is a big Yugoslavian, Yugoslavian guy. He was um, fucking huge. And he got hold of Ingve's head, put it under his arm and said, touch Graham again, I will kill you myself. <laughs> well, that's Ingve, shut up. And we got on the bus, drove back to L.A., and uh, that's when we fired him, was on the bus that night, because you don't do that. You don't try to kill somebody who's in your band. <laughs> what? Where was the show at? That you? Uh, do you remember where? No, I can't remember. Oh. Can't remember now. But it was quite a big show, you know. And um, he really thought I sabotaged the thing by pulling. I wouldn't do he that. He kicks cables out all the time. He's done it to me so many times. But, you know, it happens. It happens. You trip over them, fucking, ah, bloody hell. You know, I mean, it happens. It happens. I, I would never do that to him because we, we knew he was very important to the band. It was just turn to do his bit, like a drum solo, you know. I don't fucking go and, you know, bash the drums with a fucking hammer or something. You know, you might as well do that. I mean, you know, he was there to do his bit, and um, which was about five minutes or so. Yeah, I would never do that because I knew he was important. Yeah, it was very much so. Did you ever tell him to go if, like years later or ever bump into him and go, well, call me or even after the show? Well, yeah, I saw him many years later and uh, it was uh, okay, but he was a bit drunk, I think, like we all were. <laughs> oh, it's good to see you again, Graham. Yeah, I'm sure, anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, it's all gone. No, it's, it's in the past, man, you know. 
whatever. That, that it's in the have past. Another, have another Heineken, yeah. <laughs> yeah so so see, see. Yeah, I mean, I've never really spoken to him for real. Okay, Tokyo. See you next year. We'll be releasing more episodes of our conversation with Graham Bonnet. If you want to catch these episodes in Patreon or right here in our members only on YouTube, join today. Until then, thank you for watching. Put your comments down below. And who loves you, baby? We do.